I thought I would do a video on how I keep track of my orchids. So my collection is somewhere between 600 and 700 orchids. And at that point, it becomes very difficult to know what I have and where it is. So I use a database program that is on my phone to um, keep track of my orchids. And I'm going to do uh, a screen recording um, as I go through that program. Um, back in, uh, I think about 2012, which at this point is about eight years ago, um, I started having way too many orchids to keep track of. Um, I think at that point I was somewhere around 300 orchids and it had become impossible to just remember what had bloomed, when it had bloomed, what it looked like. And so um, I started looking for a way to keep track. Uh, at that time, there weren't lots of apps in the app store. And um, the way a lot of people seem to keep track of the orchids was something called Orchid Whiz, which is a program used by um, a lot of AOS judges to keep track of uh, orchids. However, it is a desktop program. It's also really intense. It reaches into um, the database of the AOS and has awards and such. And it's probably great for judges, but it was way too much. And it also couldn't take it around on my phone. And I wanted to be able to take photos of my orchids and keep track of them in a database. So after looking around um, on the internet um, and basically in the Apple App Store, um, there are a lot fewer apps back then. Um, I decided to go with this program called My Stuff Pro. It's basically a home inventory program and it's uh, been replaced with My Stuff too. Uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's basically for home items. He's the, the, the default database that comes with it just keeps track, you know, books, whatever, if you're gonna sell things. And um, I basically was able to use it to make a custom orchid database. Right here is my orchid database. Um, it's divided into two set main sections, um, orchids and X orchids. So X orchids is basically things that have left my collection. And then orchids is divided into two separate um, subcategories. Orchids, the ones that are currently in my collection and my wish list, which are things that I want. And as you can see on my wish list, um, I have mostly Richard Mueller's that I'm looking for. So there's lots and lots of Richard Mueller's that I'm looking for. And I have put them all here because they have lots of different names and I can't remember all of them. And this just helps me keep track when I'm out shopping or searching the internet as to uh, ones that I don't have. Um, a lot of the ones left here are much rarer and I haven't seen most of them. Um, I've seen a little Richard. I've seen a Cecilia Irene, um, and then down here, um, I have seen a Otara Hidden Gold, and actually I had one, but I killed it, so it went back to my wish list after I murdered it. So then, um, in X orchids and X orchids are sorted into, I made ca general categories. Um, they're not 100% um, correct, because uh, when I started adding categories, um, especially when I got into like miniatures, I discovered that there are way too many um, categories for uh, me to have and it just became a huge, huge list. And so I have a miscellaneous category where I have stuffed lots of um, miniatures by species because I just couldn't keep track. And I guess if I get too many, I will make a category for them. But the system is really easy to use. Um, so for example, um, in orchids, um, whoops, let me see. You can basically edit a category when you, when you set it up. So, so like right here, I have my orchids and then, um, I decided that it would have certain attributes. Um, rather than having it all on one text line, I have decided to set up each of my attributes. So I have genus and your Grex and your cultivar, and then, it, um, I put them into each separate area and then I can decide how I want to display the text and I can say how I want to have my group sorted. And so then you can see back here when 
I come back to Categories, and I come into, like, say, Catalez, right, it gives me the whole um, name here on the line. And then inside each individual category, I have, like, here's my David Sanders. So you can see here is the genus and the grex, the cultivar, etc. Some of it's not filled out, and then it's not on the line. But then I have um, a photo, so I could edit section. I can add additional pictures and just go to my app, and I can either take a picture on the spot or add one from my um, photo library. I can add attachments. I have very few attachments. Um, and then I can add custom attributes. So sometimes I get stuff that's in a community pot or it's Paloric. I can just add an attribute to say that. And then for each of these, I have set up what he calls actions. So I've set mine things for up for things when I do it. So I write when they bloomed. Um, I put a category in for when they died, but I almost never fill it out. I just move them to X orchids. Um, I probably should since I put it there so I could know when they left my collection. Um, I wanted to be really OCD about this, but I'm not enough. Um, and then I, the category, I, when I split the cat, um, divide the orchid, donated. Um, so I give a lot of orchids away. Um, sometimes, all right, so one of his original categories, because, you know, you could do this with books and you could lend books to people, is Lent. I don't really lend orchids to anybody. Um, lost, uh, you know, it just disappeared. Uh, purchase, I use purchase a lot um, because I like to buy orchids. Um, you don't really repair orchids, that's left over from his original database. Um, sometimes I put them up for sale, sometimes I sell them or I sell a division, I keep the actual orchid. And then usually after I have, if I've sold out all the divisions of a plant, then I'll move it to X orchids. And then I have trades, right? Because trades are free. There's no cost to them. And so I can add these actions. And so you can see here, I've added some actions to my David Sander, like blooming. And then it comes here and it tells you what date time I added it. And I can put what date bloomed and it can keep track of that. And then there's locations. And I've just started modifying my locations to have things like they're in bark, they're in a community pot, they're a flask. Um, I have things like whether they're in my house. Um, this is also left over from his original database. I haven't decided, but you notice I have a plant room here, which I guess most people don't have in their house because you can just modify all this stuff. Um, and then while I was trying to decide this, I also had things like whether I wanted to have it, you know, like was it in my terrarium? Was it in semi-hydro? Is it mounted? You know, how did I do the mounting? So there's a bunch of ways to keep track of that. I haven't really filled this out because I've just tr started trying to decide how I want to do this. Um, but what this really allows me to do, so after I've sorted in categories, I have on this line, you know, the photo and the item, and I can keep track of what I really wanted to know originally when I started this was um, when has an orchid bloomed, right? And what do the blooms look like? And I can go in and I can also click on a photo and I can look at it big and I could say, aha, this one looks like this. Does it look different? And I also need, of course, a better way to keep track of this, but does it look different from my other mini song, which looks like this, right? So this is what was important to me is what do they look like? And what was the last time they bloomed? And I'm 80% good about keeping track of that. But you know, you know, you could, I could add a category for when I fertilized um, or uh, when I, you know, repotted, all these kinds of things. So, oh, so that actually here on that one is pretty good because I have a purchase, right? So I could put what day I purchased it, how much it was, who my vendors were. I have a modifiable vendors list, so I don't have to type the names every single time. And, um, also, if I did it at an event, so some of these will say things like I got them at the Chicago Botanic Garden or at the Chicago Orchid Land Festival. Um, and since like, say, for example, the Orchid Land Festival now has two locations and it used to have like four, but two locations. So I could have gotten it at Hauserman's, but I could have gotten it from a guest vendor. So, you know, some of them will say things like um, Equigenera. So like, and I can even search by uh, like this one. So I got this from Equigenera and I got 
it's um it's an orchid uh, orchids by Hauserman and I got it at the Chicago Land Orchid Festival in 2017. So this is how um, I keep track of stuff and you can tell I haven't bloomed this one yet it doesn't have a photo it doesn't have any bloom dates um, and that's how I keep track and this is totally modifiable which is what I really like about it and then I can do things with uh, if I can get back up here here we go um, so I can transfer this um, so I could export this to different locations and <coughs> all right I have really bad allergies and I can only say that I know at least it's not COVID because my son got tested for COVID yesterday when we took him to college and he came up negative so I can hopefully assume that the rest of us are also negative so it's not COVID it's just allergies anyways so I can export it to places and I tend to back up my data to uh, Google Drive. All right, so then I can also, of course, um, oh, whoops, you can see I have a lot of different databases. Uh, I can also import the data afterwards. And another thing I can do if I wanna import data is so, uh, I can get it from any place. There's like files over Wi-Fi. Uh, but the other things I can do with this is I can save a CSV file on, let's say, my Google Drive. And then I can actually, did I hit export import? Um, I can actually basically import a spreadsheet. So here, this is going to my Google Drive. And you can see that I had some things like I made Carter, I bought from Carter and Holmes. And so if I have a huge number of orchids, I can basically import them through um, Google Drive um, onto this. And I don't have to type each one in independently. So I really like that aspect of this. Um, and it's customizable. So if I want to add a category, I can add a category. I'm not locked to someone else's idea of how you should keep track of your collection. And so, whoops, obviously I like my mini song a lot. Um, I have a subcategory in my Catalayas for just Richard Mueller's. It makes little summaries right here. So I can always know how many orchids I have in my collection. I have 691 catalog categorized orchids right now. <coughs> and one that's not in a category. I'll have to figure out which one I forgot to categorize. Um, I have one sorted by, um, type so I have like catacetums um, and like I said because I can decide what goes into a category I have in my catacetums I have the Fred Clark cars that I have and I also have my kaisas which aren't really catacetums but they're kind of like catacetums so in my mind I put them in the catacetum category I am not saying my categories are 100% correct but hey it's customizable I can do whatever I want and so often if I'm looking for an orchid and I can't decide what where it is, I will just look in my database and see if it's in the database still or if it's in X orchids. So you can see I have killed 427 orchids since I started doing this. Um, I can just delete a category, but usually I just move it. And you know, quite a few of these things that are here that are dead or divided, I have of course bloomed them or killed them. Um, and then it's always very, very sad right here. I have lots of things that I have killed. You can see as it goes on and on and on. Yes, I think this is depressing. I don't think we want to look there anymore. So, um, but it does tell me in general how many orchids I have in any category. And um, you can tell right here that the majority of my collection, over half, are Catalyst. So that's what I use to keep track of my orchids. And it was a lot of work to set this system up originally, but you know, I've now been using it eight years and I think uh, it's a lot better because it's customizable, right? Um, I'm not locked to someone else um, that it's just easier to use because of that. And then um, the other thing is, is that I've gone through, um, no one's ever asked for it, but I've made, so you can see here in databases, there's an orchid template. 
So I can open up my orchid template. <clears throat> so this just got like a sample three orchids in it. And in the template, um, you can see it has, doesn't have anything in it because it's just empty, but it's got all the categories that I have when I made the template. And I have saved, you can ba I basically have saved this template to uh, like Google Drive. And I basically, as then I can, I can basically share it. I can send that template to anybody who wants it and then they can import it and they can just have it and they could use my system. Um, though of course, obviously no one has really wanted to do that. So that's my ORCID system. And, uh, oh, and, and you can give little icons here. So you can see I have a little flower, this Arangus fastuosa, supposedly alive. And then this Arangus hyaloides, which has got the little death symbol next to it, is dead. And you can see it's in the category X orchids here. So I just wanted to add that um, I do cheat, quote unquote, a little bit. Um, not everything in my collection is in the database. So, for example, this um, Catalea Somersault by Lulu, which I got from H&R. Um, you see I have a custom note that says it's a community pot and that I split it on June and that there were seven uh, plants that came out of that division. Uh, I have not put all seven of those individually into my database. It's in as one entry, so um, I actually probably have a lot more orchids than um, the 600 or some that I have listed in the numbers since I have not actually listed all of my Cataleas. So there's, I have 691 and probably I actually have a lot more since uh, like, for example, with uh, that community pot that I split up, um, there are seven plants out of that in my collection and uh, they're not all listed. So that's um, how I keep track of my orchids. And if you're looking for a system, um, I highly recommend you customizing your own rather than using um, a pre-made one because then it'll be everything that you want it to be.